All right, thanks for watching and welcome to our fifth way of doing the Gaussian integral. And this is one of my favorite ways because it's actually very geometric and in my opinion, very natural. And it involves, if you want, either Fubini's theorem or, uh, it's a me, Fubini, <laughs> or uh, sort of the technique of calculating volumes in single variable calculus. So if you want the disk method, if you'd like. Uh, and yeah, let's do it. So first of all, look at the following graph. Look at the graph of z equals to e of minus x squared plus y squared. So in three dimensions, it just looks like the usual uh, 2D bell curve. So x, y, z, it looks something where it starts at one, at zero, and it just goes down, but sort of symmetrically in every direction. And this gives us a certain volume, turns out it's a finite volume, and we would like to calculate this volume in two different ways. So first of all, we would like to calculate it by doing sort of vertical slices. So let's see if I have more colors. Um, in other words, if you slice it this way, so I call it vertically, then you get a certain object with, uh, with area A of Z. So given z, you slice it at the height z, and it turns out, of course, you get a disk. And let's calculate, first of all, the area of that disk. So horizontally, so we have this area z. And how do you get the volume given a certain slice? Well, by single variable calculus, all you need to do is sum up those slices, or mathematically, it's you integrate all the slices. So on the one hand, the volume can be found as simply the integral from zero to one of a of z dz. And now let's calculate this area. And again, notice, the slices are disks, so it is the disk method, and therefore the area of z is just pi times the radius squared, whatever the radius is. So if this is r, it's pi r, pi r squared, and in this case, the radius is nothing else than y, so it's just pi y squared. And now let's see what y is in terms of x and possibly z. So, sorry, in terms of z and maybe x, we'll see. Notice it doesn't really matter which x we pick for that radius. In particular, it's, um, you can easily figure out what r is by using the plane x equals to zero. So let's chop it off this way at x equals to zero. Then our bell curve, our 3D bell curve, just becomes the original bell curve, something like that. And remember we're chopping it off at the point zero comma z, because here, x equals to zero, so this point is really zero comma z, and we want to find r, and this is again the point y comma z. Why am I doing this? Because at x equals to zero, our graph is actually much easier. It just becomes the graph of z equals to e of minus y squared. And let's see. So if z equals to e of minus y squared, then ln of z equals to minus y squared. So uh, if you want y becomes, or I guess y squared becomes minus ln of z. Which is what we wanted. We wanted to write y in terms of z. So y squared is minus ln of z. So a of z is minus pi ln of z. 
So that's on the one hand. On the one hand, it turns out the area is minus pi ln of z. So to find the volume, let's just integrate that. So the volume, again, is integral from 0 to 1, a of z dz. That's integral from 0 to 1 of minus pi ln of z dz. Again, a wild ln degenerate appears. So, And remember, the antiderivative of ln is x ln of x minus x. So this becomes z ln of z minus z from 0 to 1. But z ln of z, as z goes to 0, you can use L'Hopital's rule and you find this is 0, and this is 0, and at 1 we get 1 ln of 1, ln of 1 is 0, minus 1, so in the end you get minus pi times minus 1, and you get pi. So, on the one hand, if you calculate the volume of this object using the horizontal slices, you get pi. So in other words, the volume under this 3D bell-shaped curve is pi. And now what we would like to do, we would like to find another way of calculating this volume, in this case, with vertical slices. In other words, what happens if you slice this object vertically in this way? Then you get other bell curves with area A of Y. So, vertically, we then get that the volume of this object is the integral from negative infinity to infinity of those slices. So, vertically. The volume then also becomes the integral from negative to infinity to infinity a of y dy. And notice, by the way, so far there is no Gaussian integral yet, but it'll appear now. Because what is a of y? Well, it just becomes, you know, at every point, it simply becomes the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e of minus x squared plus y squared dx. Because at every slice here, if you fix y, you're just integrating our function with respect to x. So this becomes, so in other words, a of y is just the integral from negative to infinity to infinity. e of negative x squared plus y squared dx. Which, by the way, makes sense because this is a function of y. So in other words, you would like to make the x disappear, and the way you to do that is you integrate with respect to x, and then we get this e of negative y squared doesn't depend on x, so it pulls out. So e of negative y squared, integral from inf minus infinity to infinity of e of negative x squared dx. But this is precisely the full Gaussian integral, which I like to call i. So it becomes e of negative y squared times i. So a of y is this. And then to find the volume, we just integrate that with respect to y. So in other words, the volume, on the other hand, becomes the integral from negative infinity to infinity of a of y dy, which is e of minus y squared i dy. So this is a of y, i i captain. And this, the nice thing is this i just pulls out and we get i times the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e of minus y squared dy but this is, lo and behold, i again. So we get i i, and we get i squared. So, on the one hand, the volume is pi, just by using the disk method. On the other hand, the volume is i squared, just by using 
Fubini-ish, I guess. Not even Fubini, just slicing it directly. So, in other words, what we get, because they calculate the same volume, I squared has to be pi. So I squared is pi. And well, I is positive, so I is square root of pi. Ta-da! So, I think this is beautiful. It's very geometric. Again, it's just based on finding two ways of calculating the area under the bell, 3D bell-shaped curve. So, I think it's very neat. Uh, and again, I would like to thank Keith Conrad for coming up with those ideas. They're really, really cool. It's a really cool handout. You should check it out. And if you like this and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.